All right, this is my project. I'm going to be building this wood stove. It's going to have a round uh, pipe bottom and a uh, that's going to match the direction of the chimney and the uh, uh, whole stove is going to swivel. This stove is going to have a an arched bottom and top and then uh, and I've changed the design since this sketch here. There's going to be a single pair of hinges on the left and uh, a the uh, latch mechanism on the right uh, and then uh, get into the parts of the stove. Here you can see I've got the uh, curved bottom steel. I've changed this draft design for bringing air into the stove. Uh, that's gonna, you'll see that later in the video. Uh, then you've got your glass face. Uh, the door frame here that the glass face hangs on and then this is the face frame much like you would build a cabinet. Uh, this frame is welded to the side plates and the back plate as well as the top plate. Uh, up here you can see the detail on the second uh, burn. Uh, this is important to that second, uh, second combustion. Oh yeah, you'll be able to get that EPA rating as soon as you apply for that. Uh, but it creates a secondary burn of the hot smoke gases coming up into the top area of the stove. So pretty much everything I've been able to figure out. Uh, I bring this back to the YouTube uh, community because uh, that's how I learned most of this stuff and I'm trying it for my first time now. So using just gatorboard and cardboard, I cut these parts out, fit them together to check the, the dimensions on everything, make sure I like the overall scale of it because you can't really tell until you see it in full size. So I cut them down into quarters. So this is one corner of the front door window and I cut four of these for the uh, face frame and four more for the door itself. Now one of the first things I had to do was to stretch this, the big sheets of, of metal, the 3 16 metal across the top and you can see from up here it's got a pretty good bow on it probably about a two inch differential a uh, heavy duty uh, load strap with a winch buckle and was able to cinch it down most of the way with that do some welding on some little handles so you can see here where I've welded small uh, chunks of, of a flat bar onto the edges of the metal so that the clamps have something to grip to that way I was able to put the herd on it and bring down the last couple of inches to where it's lined up and able to get a weld into the corner there so that it'll all hang in. Uh, what I've got is a face frame here that fits inside of the opening. Here you can see it. And uh, some of the, the main features I'll talk about in this short section of the video is this heater section here, the door mechanism, and the hinges here. First off, the the air baffle has not been glued in place yet. I'll show you that uh, what I've got is a series of, of holes here and the holes are uh, designed to interact with a 7 inch piece of metal like this. When I drop this in place now I can shift them closed or open like so and when this is welded in place underneath the stove, the air is going to move through these holes in the front here and then through a, 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 a slot that's cut behind the face frame, the air is going to come up inside. That's really important that the air moves in this way and then it comes out through here because it's going to wash the face of the glass from the inside and keep the uh, smoke from building up against the glass face. Uh, I also have uh, the hinges designed so that the door is removable and when you swing this open you can rotate the door and it's important that right here I've got enough clearance so that when the door is in the 180 position to its regular position, uh, opening I can lift this up and remove the door To make the handle for the wood stove, I found a slag hammer at uh, 
lows. This is for chipping away your slag off your welding. Uh, I cut off the head here and then I heat bent it right here so that I'd have a 90 degree bend on it and then I kept this coil in hand so that I'd have a nice cool coil. You can see here how it looks when I finish the design and on this side what I've put together is uh, first a washer that goes against the inside of the frame and then on, I've got just a cotter pin to hold it so that it can swivel and then on the other side of the cotter pin I've got uh, the threaded rod. I welded a bolt onto the 3 8 inch bolt onto the end of the hammer, uh, the slag hammer stud and uh, now from that I've, I've got a nut, a lock washer, a, uh, a tab of metal and then another lock washer and another uh, nut. So that way I can with this device I can move that uh, tab in and out according to where it needs to be when I'm compressing it against the face of the, of the face plate on the stove. That way I can get maximum compression and make sure that I'm uh, getting a good seal. Uh, this piece here was just salva salvaged off of a uh, some welding uh, supports. You can get it at any welding supply store. I just cut it up. It was a pre-bent piece of metal. Uh, so I was able to just drill that out and, and shave it off. So you might look for those. Latch, And you can see that I've shaved the metal out to allow capacity for this thing to move. And as it gets into the door opening, when I twist it, it's going to compress against the inside back of that. And uh, max position is in the down, handle down position. So I can turn it up and release it, push it in and turn it down. So I've also come up with a little piece of metal here. This is intended to be welded inside the door frame where you can't see it and what that's going to do is it's going to ride against this piece for maximum compression. So if I put it on, weld it on this side and as that comes down it's going to strike against this slight rise of metal, very, very subtle rise of metal and give me a really good compression. On the outside of the face frame I've welded one inch uh, flat bar uh, with a relief on this side. This is where the glass is going to sit so it will sit flush against that there. On the inside I get about five eighths of an inch uh, capacity inside for my asbestos rope for the wood stove. Uh, so, I'll show you here. I welded another uh, half inch tab of metal on the inside to create a, a channel. And this channel is going to hold the asbestos rope. So, as I go down in with that, it's going to fit down inside of that. Of course, they make glue for welding this in. And I can tab all that stuff in there and when it's all finished I'm gonna have a nice clean fit rope that's gonna fit inside of the uh, door frame. You can see I built the stove with a single six inch pipe coming out the bottom to support it uh, but this is also gonna be a rotating stove so on this heavy duty it's like a quarter inch wall pipe I've welded a bottom plate and on that I've got a, a, a Lazy Susan bearing that turns so now I can rotate the stove within the cabin it will face either the kitchen where the dining table is or the living room or I can spin around and it'll face outside to the deck. Uh, this is going to be captured by this frame. Here's my base. It's got a small a bigger tube that this fits inside and then a set of three bearings that are going to be attached around the top. These bearings will guide the top part of the pipe to keep it straight. Two of the bearings are fixed, uh, welded directly in place like this one here. And then uh, one of them I've left loose and, that, and I have a cross drilled a bolt that is welded into the pipe here. And that, uh, this one is left loose so that I can tighten it down and get a good squeeze on all three of the bearings.